Welcome to the Maximal Manchester Terrier video on dental health. Now this is something that's particularly important if you own a toy Manchester Terrier. In my experience, they are more prone to dental issues, which include buildup of plaque and gingivitis that contribute to early tooth loss, than say the standard Manchester Terriers or other breeds. Um, this is in particular though, don't think of it as a toy Manchester issue, think of it as a toy dog issue. Because their mouths are much smaller, their teeth are packed in much tighter, and that makes it easier for plaque to build up, which leads to all of the issues that cause bad breath and poor dentition. And the reason why this is so important is because I think a lot of owners don't realize as their dogs age exactly how much damage is occurring within their dog's mouth which can lead to a lot of devastating diseases it can shorten the lifespan of your dog um, this is a breed that can easily live to 15 or 16 years but dental issues lifelong dental issues or senior dental issues can take a year or two off your dog's life and you may not even realize that's occurring because this is such a long-lived breed to begin with in addition to that, your dog's mouth can look totally fine to you and they could be acting totally normal, but they could actually be in pain from dental disease and you may not even realize it. So it's really important to keep on top of your dog's dental health. I think it's easiest when you're starting off with a puppy because there's a few basic things you can do to encourage your dog to chew which will then encourage your dog to do a little bit of its own work to maintain its dental health. So I have some products here that are great for any aged Toy Manchester Terrier, and I'm going to go through them for you and why I like them. You'll notice that I don't have any animal bones here. I don't have beef bones or anything like that, raw bones. Um, I personally don't like giving dogs bones because you will find that most veterinarians and dental specialists will tell you that they are one of the biggest contributors to broken teeth in your dog in addition to antlers. Antlers are also very bad for your dog's teeth. And I feel that the risk of a dental breakage far outweighs the cleaning benefits to your dog's teeth because I feel your dog is more likely to have a breakage and they can have hairline fractures and you may not even see them and it can go all the way down through the root of the dog's tooth and be very painful. And you wouldn't even know, a vet wouldn't even know unless dental x-rays were done on your dog and dental x-rays need to be done under sedation. So these are products that I have found to be safe and effective, and you wanna start giving them to your puppies at a young age to develop a habit of fun and play with these items so that they come to them throughout their adult life as well, and they will have positive effects for their teeth. They also, if you have a puppy who is less than six months of age and is trying to get their puppy teeth out, retained puppy teeth is another problem in toy Manchesters and toy breeds in general. So these will help get your dog's teeth out so you don't have to go to the vet and hopefully you won't have to pay to have the teeth extracted, which would involve anesthesia, which of course we don't like if we don't have to use it, um, and can be expensive. So the first item I have here is a bully stick, and I have a 6 inch and a 12 inch bully stick to show you the difference. Um, I've actually found that my dogs prefer the 12 inch bully sticks, and they last longer because they're twice as big but they also um, play with them for much longer because of their size. It's easier for them to grab onto. So I have both in the house. This six inch one is, is very pale because it's been around for a while and nobody really chews it. Um, this is a rather new 12 inch that they've been chewing on already. And these are not going to have a high risk of causing breakage or problem with the teeth. This is just a flat piece of easy digestible rawhide. Um, rawhide, you run into problems when it's when they swallow chunks of it. They're more often to do that when they have knotted rawhide. So you'll see ones where maybe it'll look like this, but they'll have knots on the end. Um, that's a just traditional rawhide that shape that you'll see. They can get those knots off and swallow them and cause a blockage. So I really don't like those, but there's a lot of options now for rolled rawhide that are easily digestible, and it'll say easily digestible on the bag. And so that is what I'll buy for my dogs, and I haven't had any issues. This is pork roll, a, a rolled pork rawhide, and these are often flavored. The white ones are not flavored 
And these are really good if your dog has a sensitive stomach, but it may not be enough to entice them to chew. So you might need to get something that's flavored. And these are made by a brand called Pork Chomps. And my dogs love the flavor of these. And they're, they're, these, all these products are sturdy enough that you can leave them out long-term for your dog to chew on. You, you can leave them crated if you leave the house with the items. And you don't have to worry about them eating through them so quickly that they're gonna get down to a small enough piece that they're gonna choke on it while you're away. Now this is advice specific to toy breeds because that is not true with these products if you have a larger breed dog. You would not want to give them to these dogs, these to your dogs if you had a larger breed and leave them unattended. The next thing I have here is a bento ball made by Starmark. And this is an empty one so you can see the inside. It has a hole here where you can put treats in on one side and then it has um, the insert, treat inserts that go inside. Now this is the small ball and this is the large ball. And I'm actually out of the inserts for the small balls, so this is an insert for the large one. This would go in this side of the ball. This is the treat side. And then this is the side that you put the insert in. And you can see one of my dogs has already chewed it down so that's just a ring, and they'll eventually eat through this and then I'll just replace it. So the, the treat itself is actually like a disc with a little bit of brush head type thing on the one side. This goes facing out. So my dogs really like these, and they'll even play with these balls and throw them around the house even when there's no treats in them because they just really like to chew on them. And this rubber here helps also with massaging the gums and gum health, so I really like these. And these are not something that the dogs can break chunks off of, at least not the smaller dogs. The next thing I really like, and this is more of a treat for your dog, these are Nylabone Filet Mignon Dental Treats. And they're similar, they're like Nylabone's brand of greenies. And I actually have greenies here too. I like the greenies as well. It's important with these products that you pay attention to the weight size on the bag because if you give your dog uh, one of these Nyla Bones or greenies that's bigger than their weight than is allotted for their weight size, it will give them diarrhea. But you also want to make sure you don't give them ones that are too small because they can swallow them and choke on them. So it's important to make sure you're buying the appropriate size for your weight of dog. And these are really good treats to give them if maybe, I'll give them if I'm gonna put them in their crate because I'm doing something and I'm, I'm a little busy and I just can't watch them right now. And they're just gonna be in their crate for a short period of time and I just want them to have something as a reward for being quiet. So I'll put them in their crates with these and this is something that will, that will do that and it also helps with their dental health as well. You just can't give them too many in one day because like I said, it'll cause stool issues. So those are all the, the dental treats that I like to have out for my dogs. 24 seven, they have access to these treats. I don't have an issue with fighting. Um, if you have an issue with dogs that fight over resources, then you would want to separate your dogs to give them these, these items each day. And you would want to make sure that um, they couldn't fight over them. Maybe give it to them in their crates instead. But all of my dogs get along really well. So these are just out all the time with the exception of the greenies and the Nyla bones. So next we're gonna talk about what I use for brushing teeth. And I brush my dog's teeth. My goal is to brush my dog's teeth every night before bed. And I don't always do that. So I let myself off the hook if I can do it five nights a week. And I have found, I've been doing this for two years, and I have found a tremendous increase in the dental health of my dogs. Now, this is not going to have the same effect if you're starting off with a dog that has a dirty mouth. So if you have a dog that has inflamed red gums or if their gums bleed easily, um, or you see a lot of plaque built up on your dog's teeth, I would suggest having your dog treated by a vet to have a dental done and starting fresh with clean teeth. Your dog may even, if their dog mouth looks like that, need to have some teeth removed. If there are any loose teeth in your dog's mouth, they need to be removed. That is signs that there has already decay and it may already be painful for them. So I would especially urge you to get to a vet and have a dental done if there are loose teeth in your dog's mouth. So if you're starting off with a relatively young dog whose teeth have not been able to get the buildup of tartar yet, or you have a dog that's recently had a dental, that is a good time to start brushing. And that is not to say that you shouldn't brush your dog's teeth if your dog's teeth don't look so great, but it's not really gonna probably do a whole lot for your dog until you, you get proper dental care. So I use a Sonicare toothbrush. This is different from an electric toothbrush. A Sonicare toothbrush is, it cleans with the, the Sonic 
action and you don't have to actually brush the teeth. You only hold it, you place it on the dog's teeth and you just hold it there very gently. And that is what cleans the teeth. And it's the same concept, this is a human Sonicare toothbrush. So it's the same concept if you own a Sonicare toothbrush yourself, you're, you're already used to this, but if you're not used to it, you need to understand that you're not brushing the teeth, you're just gently holding it up against the teeth for a few seconds, and that is enough to clean the teeth. The one that I have has three speeds, and I really like that because I'm able to introduce them to it at the lower speed and gradually work them up to the higher speed, which is more effective in terms of cleaning and whitening teeth. So this is what works for me. I actually purchased this one on eBay. I got it for a third of the price that it would be sold for in the store, and it said brand new. It was probably used when I got it, but I'm not putting it in my mouth, and I got new brush heads for it, so it didn't really concern me. Um, so you can get these for relatively affordable prices on eBay. The next thing I have here is a toothbrush. It's Oral Health Tooth Gel by Crosstech Vet, and this was recommended to me by a dental specialist. I initially was using toothpaste from the pet store, and I did find that when I switched to this about a year ago that their teeth were even cleaner than with the traditional toothpaste. The other thing I like about this toothpaste is with the Sonicare, because of the vibrations, the toothpaste tends to splatter. And most dog toothpaste has color to it, like it's white. Um, and then it splatters everywhere and it makes a mess. This is clear, so, and it also, you don't need as much and it also doesn't have as much splatter. It like froths a little bit in the mouth, but doesn't splatter like the other toothpaste does. So it's not as noticeable when it does splatter. It doesn't make such a mess and I think it's, it's easier to use. So that's really the difference between this toothpaste and traditional dog toothpaste. I'm gonna stay, stop here and say, never ever use human toothpaste in a dog. There are ingredients that are poisonous to your dog and you could kill your dog. So only use approved dog toothpaste that is made for dogs. So this is Katana, and Katana is going to be four years old next month. And she's used to having her teeth brushed, so she's gonna be our demo dog today. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get your toothbrush wet. So I've already done that, I've run it underneath the washer. See, she's already excited because she knows she likes the toothpaste. So you're gonna to wanna to get it wet, and then you're gonna to wanna to put a pea-sized amount, you don't need very much, just a pea-sized amount on the end of the brush. Sweetie, let me do this. And then the first thing you want to do after you get after you get your dog is you want to apply this to the teeth before you start brushing because if you just you're going to go from one side of the dog's mouth around to the other side, you want to have the toothpaste spread evenly. So the first thing I do is I just gently put it over the front of the teeth from the premolars all the way around the front top teeth just to kind of spread it around evenly in the mouth and then it's also important to keep in mind that you want to get when you're brushing the teeth you want to get the brush head on the gum line you don't want to press hard just hold it there gently you don't need to move the brush back and forth like you do when you traditionally brush your teeth um, if you put too much pressure on the gums, that's going to irritate them and that's going to cause bleeding and we don't want that. You're going to slowly, you're going to start on the lowest setting if you have a dog that you've never done this with before to get that the dog and the gums used to the vibration. So the first time you do it, you may see some light bleeding and that's okay. You, you want your, you'll be ready to move up to the next setting when your dog's gums no longer look irritated after you brush their teeth. So you're going to start by putting this underneath their cheek and you don't want to turn it on until it's in their mouth because it's going to splatter everywhere. You're going to hold it up against the gum line of the back molars and then you're going to turn it on. And then you're just going to slowly work it forward, holding it over the teeth a little bit at a time. And you want to make sure the bristles are, are pointed up towards the gum line. And you want to make sure that the bristles are getting in between the teeth. You can see it's foaming a little bit. 
And then you're gonna go back and do this back tooth the same way you did this other side and hold it there. Now when I do them, I start on one side one night and I start on the other side the other night. Just how I do it. And then you're gonna go back and you're gonna do the bottom teeth the same way you did the top teeth. And you're gonna pull the lip down here to make sure you're actually getting the base of these bottom incisors. These are the most important teeth. The incisors are the most important teeth because they're the first ones to go bad and get loose and fall out on a toy breed dog. So you want to make sure you're really spending the time to get in there and it can be difficult because they have tight lips. So Katana's done. And she likes her toothpaste so she's licking her lips. Thanks for joining us. That was our toothbrushing demonstration. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.